Chicago is a town where you could come and, and survive because Chicago held out a political hand to black folks because it was building a dynasty on, 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 on black political muscle. from the South that began during the boom years of the Second World War. It was these people who were responsible for reviving country-style blues in Chicago. Well, I was walking, you know, in a strange city, and I could hear police stand on every corner in town. Oh, oh, ain't right this train. Johnny Lewis is a house painter and he learned to play the guitar in Georgia in 1919. Yeah, that's the hobo blues. You like it? Say, so you like it? He came to Chicago in 1943. Met a with a man whereas I was sitting there drinking coffee like I'm just now. Uh, Mr. Bradford. He was looking for a painter. He kept talking and I went to tell him about I could paint. And he said, uh, you talk solid. And I said, well, Yes, I've uh, just only been here a day and a night. <laughs> I said, uh, but I would like to work. He said, well, what do was paying you down in Georgia? I said, well, he was paying me a dollar an hour. He said, well, I'll give you a dollar. He said, I'll give you, a, make it better than that. I'll give you a dollar and a quarter, so, which I didn't know. I thought it was pretty good. <laughs> and, uh, and I went on and took it. Yeah. <laughs> Blues is black man. 
Land's music. Its rhythm and the style of its vocal expression are derived from African forms. Its harmonies and chord sequences are based on old British ballads and white Protestant hymn tunes. The end product is unique. It comes directly from the people who sing it. <laughs> the blues, you know, uh, is a story. A story of life. But it all depends on the life we live. And uh, but now in South, most of them made up their songs as they went along. And uh, if uh, he was catching a mule to work with or something, and uh, the mules that he hadn't been working with, he maybe his shoulder was so from pulling a plow or pulling a heavy load or something like this. This is how these type of songs was made. And he would get to thinking about his mule got shoulder was so and all like this, and he'd just make a song. Maybe the song would go something like this, say. Uh, he would walk out there and say, Oh, I didn't plow, oh, Susie. I didn't plow, oh, Belle. You know I can't find a mule with a show well. Musically, the blues has evolved a long way from songs like this. But the themes have remained the same. The pain of lost love, loneliness, misfortune, oppression, hard times. These troubles which black people hope to leave behind in Mississippi stayed with them in Chicago. What happened is that um, the fantastic despair of black people coming north, there was so much expectation for a change people have always seen the city as being the place of the future. Uh, black people did too, except that they found that uh, the future was compromised by a lot of hopelessness. Uh, it's true that some of us made our way, but a lot of us stumbled in the process. A lot of depressions occurred. A lot of slum housing overcrowded our lives. And um, I came to Chicago and I had a basement apartment and I was paying uh, $125 a month for a basement apartment. Now, if that's what the basement's going for, you know what the first floor, second floor, and third floor's going for. Now, that was good, because I could find a place. Now, it don't bother me too much, because I can go out and find my pal, John, rent him a room for $10, so that's $40 a month I got coming in. And my cousin's coming to town, I rent him a room for $10, so that's $80. So now, the interesting thing is a black man pays more for a basement apartment then white folks pay for a note on their house. It's the hassle that we have. Now, consequently, what happens, that I'm in the basement apartment, I have an automobile. The two gentlemen that rent with me have an automobile. Now, you got three cars in front of a house that has space for one just in the basement. Now, go all the way up that house where everybody else has split that house up the same way, and you might have 14 automobiles, man, for two houses. So then somebody got to park seven blocks away in that whole community. So if I can't watch my car, it's easy for you to break into it. Now my insurance goes up. Okay? I make less than you on your job. And my dues is more because of a racist system. Now with more cars in the community and the same amount of small streets that white folks have, there's more accidents. And so consequently, I'm a bad risk. And so all of these pressures and all of these hassles and all of these fallacies make me different. Many black folks is not sophisticated enough to sit down and know what it is, but the nervous system feels it, and this is what we relate to, and this is what we react to. Then the world want to know what this all about, but you know I'm here. I got a mojo too. I got the Johnny kind of look. I'm gonna mess with you. 
I'm gonna make you girl Leave me by my hand Then the world I know That I'm the hoochie coochie man But you know I'm here Seven day on the seven month, the seven doctors said he was born for good luck, and that you see. Most blues singers can't make a living from their music. They're working men, and they play in their spare time. Even for someone like Muddy Waters, success comes late, if it comes at all. I, I got a job. I was working at a paper factory, containers. I worked there during the days and I played the weekend at house parties, you know, at different houses. Just me and my guitar. Finally it began to leak out, you know, that they had a pretty good guy from Mississippi here. Yeah. They called me the young blues singer then, you know. I think I'm responsible for Chicago's blues. I think I'm the man that set Chicago up for the real blues. You're a 19-year-old. You got ways just like a baby child. type of blues that I sing, you must pay the cost out there. You just don't get up and just walk the streets uh, and get you what you, whatever you want whenever you get ready and can sing the blues like myself, Lightning Hawkins, John Lee Hooker, even down to my good friend B.P. King. He only sang urban blues, a little higher class of blues than me, but he's strictly singing some good, deep blues. Plus, you got to go to church to uh, get this particular thing in your soul, you know. <laughs> same world as the tavern and club. There is the same sense of community. The same knowledge that the brother talking or singing up there knows what you feel. But the blues is about the troubles of this world. It doesn't offer solutions. It's a lament. Gospel has a solution. God is the answer.
give more of a truthful situation. No, I don't have no job. I can't give my woman what she wants. I'm going to give her diamond rings. I'm going to do this. The guy's actually telling the truth, you know. You see, the blues lets you think, lets you know what's going on around you. And as you see these various things, you know, you can uh, think on uh, how the other fellow feels. When, when these various people have the blues, most of the time they don't think about themselves as much as they do the other fellow because he know how he feels. And uh, you find most blues people are right down to earth and real natural people. You know the boy is still on the picket line. You know I need a hundred dollars. You know I need to make a dollar. Said it cost a living how gone high. Darling, I don't know what to do. I caught the streetcar this morning about half past four. I gave the man a lever, and he says, this two cent more, you know I need a hundred dollars. You know I need to make a dollar off. Said it cost a living how gone high. Darling, I don't know what to do. I went to the butcher, showcase, I'll give a peek. I got a purse and raised man on all of my meat. You know I need to hunt a dog. You know I need to make a dollar off. But it costs a living how gone high. Darling, I don't know what to do. Stockyard blues, no kidding. It was right in the time. And um, I got the streetcar. It was early in the morning. The well, streetcar fare was 11 cents. And it went up, and I'd forgotten. So I gave the man 11 cents. He said, man, it's two cents more. So I gave him the two cents. And then I just kept putting together and kept putting together. And I went to the butcher. He said, I got a raise on my meat. He didn't say four cent, but he said raise. And it's kept putting together. So after I start singing on the street, then the same fellow, Big Bill Brooms, he said, man, you better lay away from that number. Somebody's going to take it. So I didn't, I didn't sing it no more on the street. On and on and on. Never could get nothing clucking, you know. I mean, I just... Work locally, made a buck, you know, but not what I think I should have made at the time. A little later on, the fellas was catching, you know, they make one fair number and they gone. But I didn't make it. Most of the guys have to, of course, have a, a day job to support their music or else work whatever jobs they can during the week. Uh, music jobs during the week, of course, in Chicago are few and far between, but with the Blue Monday and the uh, Sunday afternoon and evening uh, scene, there, there, are, there are jobs. A guy can conceivably work Friday and Saturday night, Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, Monday, uh, Blue Monday jobs, which don't pay much. Uh, if uh, a guy is proficient enough, he can cop an occasional record date as a sideman which is just about the equivalent of a week's work in uh, 
in a club or weekends work in a club at scale. But most of the guys have jobs, and of course, being black and being in the, not in the uh, upper economic <laughs> class and educational class, uh, naturally these jobs are quite menial and can be very, I think, very demoralizing. The guys uh, are subject to all the pressures of the black community, plus the fact that they're musicians. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's, well, I, it's, you can make it hard for yourself and make it easy for yourself, but it's really a hard life because a whole lot of people don't understand the blues, and they, some mock the blues, and some really love it, but I play the blues because I like them, really. It dropped out of sight for a while. I don't know what, what happened. But then all of a sudden it came back. Because everybody left the blues and went for rock and roll. I mean, if you couldn't, <laughs> you couldn't do the thing, you know, you, <laughs> you had nothing going for you. So, uh, but all of a sudden, I don't know why, why how he got back, but I... But now, I mean, if you don't play the blues now, then you got nothing going for you now. <laughs> I mean, you know, you, you got to be able, honestly, to play a little all of it. A little rock, a little roll, a little blues, a little... Yeah. What would you rather play? Me? Blues. That's right off the bat, blues. I'm <laughs> a blues man. I don't know, I, it's something difficult to explain. Some white people have soul, they have compassion, they have warmness, but they don't have, it's pretty difficult to, to, to try to be, to explain to you what being black is. And I, I'm sure you've heard the story, you've never lived until you've been black on Saturday night. Uh, there's, there's, there's something about it that, uh, no, I don't think any white person could ever, ever really feel, or ever really realize. I think it's really impossible for him to, to break down the blues like I do it because he don't have the voice to do it with. It's not saying that he haven't had the harder time that I had, some of them, maybe, maybe they hadn't. And they love the blues as good as I do, but it just, it wasn't for white men to sing deep blues as me, not yet. After a while, you know, it would be another century then probably be one born. I think probably uh, American white kids have discovered that they lack a culture of their own. They find a shallowness in most of the popular music today, which is happily not not there, not present in the black community. You can't deny the uh, 
the function of the beat, making one happy, and blues have a definite beat. Uh, blues express, I think, a lot of the emotions that kids are increasingly aware of. And I don't know, I mean, you know, the, one could say rock came from blues and the kids, you know, are coming to blues through rock. Most of the kids have to they first listen to maybe the Grateful Dead, then they'll find out that one of the Grateful Dead performances is an imitation of a Junior Wells record, so they'll go find the Junior Wells record. Yeah, baby, when the train was in the station, I know everybody got a soul, as far as the thing that God gave us, but the kind of soul that we have, nobody has it. See, and until, see you, in a way, in a way in the world possible that you can express blues like we can. It's not possible because you, you've never been through blues. 
it's very difficult to view something if you haven't been there. Because then people look stupid to you. I, I, I really never understood hunger until I went on a fast. And then I look at television, I see a dog food commercial. And I wanted some. And then after I came off the fast, I started checking various stores in various cities. And saying like, uh, let me ask you, how much dog food do you sell? And in St. Louis, Missouri, they sell more dog food in the stores next to the projects where the people are not permitted to have dogs. And for the first time, I was aware of how many people was eating dog food. And the only way I got aware of that is, man, you sit and look at a television commercial and be hungry, man. And they talk about a diet, man. And talk about the nutrition value. And I'm more protected in that can of dog food if I'm poor and hungry with a family than I am going into the supermarket shopping on my own because the government don't give me that protection in the meat counter. And so consequently, when you start looking at these things, and then for the first time, I start realizing, you know, what crime in the street is all about. It's television. When I was poor and hungry, everybody was poor and hungry in my community. But if I had television when I was a kid, it's different going to bed hungry when I was a kid with no television than it is today when one commercial show you more food than you're going to get in five years and dig it. Television never show a half a loaf or nothing. They never show a piece of cake. They never show a piece of pork chop. They never show a used car. When they do advertise used cars, they're probably using use new ones just to trick you down and make you think they look this good. And so consequently, we got the poorest people in the land that's being forced every day on commercials to look at the, the most luxurious products. 